a small motor is connected to a, um, a supply of electricity, it will spin extremely fast. Um, but you may not be aware that if you can actually spin a motor fast enough, it will actually produce electricity. In effect, you've turned it into a dynamo or a generator. Uh, the problem is that uh, with these small motors, the amount of electricity produced is very small. So you have to turn it extremely quickly to get any um, meaningful amounts of electricity. Um, uh, if you want to make a, a, a light bulb light up, you have to turn it extremely quickly. It is possible to demonstrate this. I do this regularly in primary schools. And I put a small pulley on the motor and then put a loop of string around the motor. I get somebody to hold the motor and then I pull the string, the ends of the string, and I have the motor connected to a bulb. And if you pull very quickly, uh, you can actually make the, the bulb light up. Um, but a more convenient way of demonstrating this is to use gears. Um, if you connect a small, a large gear to a small gear, when you turn the large gear, the small gear will turn much faster. Um, big to small speeds things up. <coughs> Excuse me. So here's my recipe for making a dynamo using gears. First thing we're going to do is to um, make the uh, first gear and we're going to turn it with a handle. Um, I've got a, a, a block of wood here that I'm going to uh, mount all the gears onto and I'm going to use um, some, uh, the straight part of a bendy straw to make the uh, bearings. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, cut some bearings um, just a little bit longer a little bit longer than the width of the block of wood and I'm going to um, tap uh, an axle, this is a 5mm dowel now um, this wheel, these holes, the holes in the gears I've drilled out to 4.8 millimeters. This is 5 millimeter dowel, so it would be a nice firm uh, hammer tap fit uh, in. Uh, so first of all, I'm going to um, fit the one of these pieces of dowel to the center hole of this MDF wheel. I'm going to um, slot on the uh, piece of. Uh, straw, that's a little bit too long, we'll just cut a little bit more off. Just check that there's still enough sticking out at each end. That's it, we'll slip that on. And then I'm going to tap um, a large gear onto the other end. Like this. And make sure there's a small gap here so that the the gear and the wheel will spin easily on the uh, straw. And then I'm going to uh, push in, oh, that feels a bit loose, I might have to need to put some glue on there. That's the um, uh, handle that I'm going to turn. Actually it's the wrong piece, I need a shorter piece there. There we are, and that's going to be the handle that I turn. Next I'm going to glue that onto the block of wood. Uh, I'm going to use a hot glue gun here. Just going to put some glue across the block of wood and glue it down, making sure I don't get any glue near the moving parts. There we are. And to secure that, I'm going to put a loop of glue over the straw because there's quite a lot of force going to be acting upon that so I want to make sure it's really securely glued. What I could do uh, to make it even more secure is I could put um, some square section wood uh, here and here. But we'll give that a chance to dry. So that's going to be the, the handle of the um, dynamo generator. We're now going to um, assemble the uh, next axle which is going to have a, a small gear 
which is going to which is going to turn even faster. So we tap that small gear on first of all. And then we need to tap that through because we need enough dowel coming out the other side to tap another large gear on. So we'll tap that on. So we've got a small gear and a large gear on the same axle. Next we're going to um, slide on another piece of bendy straw, a straight section of bendy straw there. And finally we're going to just um, secure that so it doesn't fall out. Uh, we could put anything on the end there. I'm just going to use this um, small pulley wheel. Again I've drilled it out to 4.8 and we're just going to, oh I think I can push that on. I'm going to push it down so it's almost reaching the straw. Make sure there's a, a small gap there. Make sure that the whole thing can turn very easily. So now I'm going to glue that in position. Um, this has to be done very carefully. You need to make sure that the, the gears, uh, the teeth on the gears will actually uh, mesh. I don't know if you can see that. Um, just going to check that it's working. Yeah, that's turning fine. So I'm just going to use a pencil to mark the position of the straw. There. So I'm going to put some glue along here. And stick that down, taking care not to get the glue anywhere near the moving parts. You've got a few seconds, uh, what I call wriggle room, and just check that the gears are meshed and will turn really easily. That looks okay to me. And once again, I'm going to loop glue over the straw to make sure it's really secured in place. There we are. So now, I don't know if you can see now, that the, uh, the handle I'm turning is turning fairly slowly. The orange gear is, turn is now turning much faster. Uh, we still haven't got um, enough speed to get any meaningful amounts of electricity out. So on, we're going to put a, another small gear on the motor. Now we could use uh, the standard motor. You can actually um, get um, LEDs to light up. But it works a lot better if you use a slightly better quality motor. This is called a solar motor. Uh, to fit a gear, we need to put an, um, an adapter to, to, uh, because it's got a 2mm shaft and the hole in the gear is 4mm. So we use this um, adapter. All these parts are available from my supply service. And then we can push that small gear onto the, onto the motor. So now um, we can glue the motor in place. Um, unfortunately the block of wood doesn't reach out f quite far enough so I'm just going to glue a small platform onto here so that we can then glue the motor onto the platform. So I'll just quickly do that. glue that platform on. Okay, so now I'm going to glue the uh, motor. We, we could use a plastic motor clip here, but uh, I'm just going to put a blob of glue there and we can now glue that motor on so that it meshes with the uh, large gear. So if we just get a blob of glue in place here. bit of a uh, stubborn glue gun here. Let's try and get this uh, small one to work. I don't think I've got enough glue out there. Oh that's much better. You do, you do need quite a, a large blob of glue. There we are, that's plenty. 
and we'll get that glue motor in place and then adjust it very carefully so that the gears line up. We don't want it to be too close, too tight together. We don't want it to be too far away that the gears don't mesh. We need to make sure that the gears mesh together. And just check that it's turning freely. Um, finally, we need to connect this up to um, some LEDs. Um, if we just connect it up to uh, one LED, um, you may know that um, LEDs are polarity conscious. You need to make sure that the LED is connected the right way round. Um, but um, you don't really have to worry too much about this because if it doesn't work, if the LED doesn't light up, then turn the handle in the other direction and it will light up. And what I've done here is that I've mounted uh, two LEDs, um, one LED in one one way round and the other LED the other way round. So no matter which way I turn the generator, one of the LEDs will light up. Um, I've used um, a piece of uh, terminal block, it's also called chocolate block connector, to help me to connect the LEDs to the wires. So that's my uh, design for a simple um, dynamo generator. I hope you enjoy making it.